The Grinnell Glacier Trail is one of the most popular trails in all of Glacier National Park. And in the many glacier district, it is arguably the most popular. There are two ways to start this trail. One way, and it would cut off probably about three miles, is to take a boat tour that starts at the Mini Glacier Motel, and that will take you across Swift Current Lake and then also hop on to another boat that will take you to Lake Josephine. A couple of things about this route, though. One, you have to book way in advance, many, many months in advance. And when you get to the end of Lake Josephine to hit the mini, or to hit the Grinnell Glacier Trail, you're going to have to go up a significant incline. The other way is to start at the trailhead for uh, Grinnell Glacier. However, you better be there, be prepared to be there way early, really early. We were in this area three times during our trip between the times of 6 a.m. and 6.30 a.m., and every time it was full. The entire parking lot was full, and there was overflow parking on the road that early in the morning. We actually decided to wait until about 11 to start our hike because we didn't have the boat tour booked in time, and we were fortunate enough to get some people who were leaving. We still had to park on the road. We parked right outside of the trailhead, which was uh, convenient because it wasn't a long walk as some were adding a quarter to a half a mile onto their walk just by, um, n you know, not getting there at 6 or 6.30 in the morning. This is some stats from the hike. We covered about 10 and a half miles according to my Apple Watch. And we covered that in about 5 hours and 21 minutes and that included probably about a half hour to 40 minutes at the top uh, at the, uh, the glacier itself. Um, it was about 2,000, just a click under 2,000 feet of vert. Um, it's a pretty steady incline the entire route. There are some areas that are more steep than others. The last, I would say, quarter of a mile is borderline ridiculous. I would say that this is a difficult to strenuous hike um, pretty much the entire way, uh, but particular in particular that last quarter mile. What set this trail apart from any other trail that we did and it was by far my favorite is that it is views upon views upon views up and down the entire route the first mile or so are pretty much in the woods which again be bear aware make sure that you take your bear spray make sure that you check the glacier uh, national park website before you go because it could be closed um, for bear activity or it could have a warning for bear activity. Um, but once you get out of the woods and start heading up, literally vert up, uh, it is nonstop views. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous hike. I think the best hike in Glacier National Park. Could run with you And from what I have heard You do the same thing too I wanna say forever We could be good together Guess misery loves company Better to late than never You know we could do better So take a chance and run with me Everywhere we go Let me show you how it feels too.
This trail is, of course, an out-and-back trail, so this waterfall area you're going to have to navigate twice. When we went in late July, the trail had just opened, or this section of the trail had just opened because of snow, and so the water runoff from above made the waterfall quite intense and quite a lot. 
Um, and you really only have two choices. You can get close to the wall, which means you're going to get doused with a lot of water, or get closer to the edge. You're still going to get wet, but not as wet, but you are on the edge, and there is a significant drop-off. Um, the High Line Trail, and the Garden Wall in particular, gets a lot of notoriety for its drop-offs, but I thought this trail had some drop-offs as well, as well that were quite significant, but to me, just added to it being the best trail at Glacier.